So I would like this meant I can kind of go on and on about the office. I love. Yes. How difficult was it for you to make the transition from being a, uh, a veterinarian to a full-time writer? How risky was it? It was slow. It wasn't an abrupt change. The question, for those of the back that didn't hear, the question is how easy was that transition from veterinarian to author? Uh, and it was a slow transition. Uh, I owned my own clinic at that time when I was writing. Um, and the first thing I did was I, I uh, sold the clinic but stayed employed with the corporate group that bought the clinic. I just shed the business headaches, uh, which was nice. And then over time, I went from full-time to part-time to weekends, and now I said all I just do is volunteer work. And my clients used to ask me, because they began to become suspicious that I was writing. Uh, mostly, like, I had posters in my lobby, you know, get your cat spayed, get a free book. Um, <laughs> so the question would occasionally come up, you know, what's your, what's your game plan, Jim? You know, uh, You've got a successful veterinary career, or why are you writing? What are you going to, what's your, I told him, well, like, for 15 years, my veterinary degree was my, my paycheck. My writing was my hobby. And I thought it'd be really cool to see eventually that flip around where, not, where writing is my paycheck and veterinary career is just my hobby. And so it's nice to actually sort of, sort of achieve that. Right now, I just do the veterinary work that I want to do. Uh, I'm now organizing a group called a Sigma to the Rescue, which will be a series of fundraisers for the Humane Society. Uh, we just opened up a little shop right now with some t-shirts that says spread the word about the lie connected to this book and if you buy the buy those t-shirts or tote bags whatever all proceeds go to the or all profits i should say go to the uh humane society and we're going to be doing some short stories that will be uh also we're all all profits will be going all proceeds rather will be going to the sbca and doing some other fundraising events so we'll be learning more about that i just i haven't i only told one other group yesterday that about sigma to the rescue otherwise that's very it's a new Revelation. Yes. Do you enjoy writing the, the recurring character series Sigma Force more than those earlier standalone novels? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, I resisted doing a series for the longest period of time. Um, that's why I was doing standalones. My house was really pushing me to do a series. You know, do a series, do a series. I think for a publishing houses, it's easier for them to to, to market and to position and to, to have momentum with a series. Uh, I just didn't want to do a series. I liked having brand new characters and brand new adventures and doing something very different. And uh, a part of me was also resist resistance because of what I call the Murder, She Wrote syndrome. Um, if you remember Jessica Fletcher from Murder, She Wrote, every week she would stumble across a dead body. Uh, after a while you begin to not quite believe it. Your suspension of disbelief begins to fade. Like how many people, I've never stumbled over a dead body. Uh, and she's always stumbling over dead bodies. <coughs> So either something's false about that or she really is a serial killer. And that's what they're going to reveal in the very last episode is that she's been framing all these people all along and she truly is the murderer. Um, but also, the, there's, there's the matter of jeopardy, uh, whether the character is going to die or not. You know, how, no matter how much you want Jessica Fletcher to die at the end of that episode, she won't. So when she's in some type of danger, you know she's not going to die because she's in next week's episode committing that next murder and you know that so it's hard to sustain that jeopardy so I didn't really want to do a series for those two reasons uh, when I created Sigma Force they were just part of Sandstorm I was not planning on doing a series but I was, I was writing that I thought well you know what I could see building a series around a team of people rather than an individual because with a team the jeopardy can come from very many different directions so you don't get that one person always getting into trouble and they could be a team that's actually sent into trouble, so it makes sense that they're getting into trouble. But also with a team, if I knock off one member of the team, uh, I can always uh, bring another team member on. They can hire somebody else to fill that role so that I can maintain a level of jeopardy amongst those characters. So once that problem was solved, I was very happy to do a series. And I do like doing series because you do get to see the characters grow and change and have some of that... Uh, that uh, you're confined somewhat in the length of a novel, what you can do. You know, my novels have a tendency to be fairly fast-paced, occur, you know, occur generally under a week's period of time, if even a week. So it, it, as a standalone, you, you don't get to see much of that character's life, but by having a whole series of novels, you begin to see a, a bigger arc amongst the character's lives, and that's fun to play with. Yes? I'll get back to you in a second. Yes? You can, uh, you can never go back to writing standalone um, Last... Christmas, I released Altar of Eden, which was a standalone. Uh, it featured a veterinarian as a lead role. It's what I describe as the first veterinary thriller. 
Um, and my new contract with uh, HarperCollins is to do two Sigma novels and two standalone novels. So there will be some more standalones coming up.